Bonjour tout le monde. Je suis ici aujourd'hui pour faire le point sur les barrages illégaux, que ce soit à Ottawa ou à nos frontières, comme à Windsor, à Coutts, à Emerson. Je vais aussi vous parler de la situation en Ukraine et de la rencontre de ce matin avec le président Biden et d'autres alliés. The illegal blockades are hurting Canadians, whether they're in Ottawa, Windsor, Coutts or Emerson. They're endangering jobs, they're threats to our economy and to public safety. The blockades are hurting small businesses and neighborhoods. At the border, they're impacting trade, supply chains, and manufacturing. The people these blockades are hurting are everyday families, auto assembly workers, farmers, truckers, and blue collar Canadians. This morning, I spoke with David Cassidy of Unifor, who told me how badly this is hurting workers in Southern Ontario. We both agree that blockades are unacceptable and that they have to end for the good of all Canadians. Hier, j'ai convoqué le groupe d'intervention en cas d'incident avec plusieurs ministres et hauts fonctionnaires. On continue de travailler de près avec les municipalités et les provinces pour mettre fin aux barrages. J'ai aussi partagé les plus récents développements avec les chefs des autres partis. J'ai insisté que tous les députés de tous les partis doivent dénoncer ces actes illégaux. On Wednesday, I spoke with Premier Ford and yesterday with Mayor Drew Dilkins of Windsor to offer the full and continued support of the federal government. Minister Al Capra, as well as Ministers Blair, Mendicino and Leblanc, are also in regular contact with their counterparts. Ontario's announcement this morning is responsible and necessary. We will continue working alongside all partners to get the situation under control. This morning, I had a direct call with President Biden to talk about our shared challenges at the border. I updated him on the situation, particularly in Windsor. We discussed the American and indeed global influences on the protest. We talked about the US-based flooding of the 911 phone lines in Ottawa, the presence of US citizens in the blockades, and the impact of foreign money to fund this illegal activity. President Biden and I both agree that for the security of people and the economy, these blockades cannot continue. So make no mistake, the border cannot and will not remain closed. I want to remind everyone that politicians don't direct police in a democratic society, but I can assure you that the RCMP is working with provincial and local police departments to enforce the law. Everything is on the table because this unlawful activity has to end and it will end. Of course, I can't say too much more now as to exactly when or how this ends because unfortunately we are concerned about violence. So we're taking every precaution to keep people safe. But the absolute safest way for this to end is for everyone to return to your communities now. If you're still participating in illegal blockades, you're hurting your neighbors. So it's time to go home, especially if you have kids with you. Dans les dernières semaines, on a vu que des fonds ont été amassés pour soutenir les barrages, incluant des fonds provenant de l'étranger. C'est important de comprendre que ces fonds ne peuvent pas soutenir des activités illégales. Canada's banks are governed by laws, regulations and practices that ensure funds cannot be used for criminal act or illegal activity, and these blockades are illegal. Canadian banks are monitoring financial activity very closely and taking action as necessary. I want to make something very clear. The illegal blockades seeking to take our neighborhoods and our economy hostage 
and the collective COVID fatigue we are facing are two very separate things. If you joined the protests because you're tired of COVID, you now need to understand that you are breaking laws. The consequences are becoming more and more severe. You don't end up losing your license, end up with a criminal record, which will impact your job, your livelihood, even your ability to travel internationally, including to the US. We've heard your frustration with COVID, with the measures that are there to keep people safe. We've heard you. It's time to go home now. And to the people who are tired of this pandemic, that is all Canadians, I want you to be able to get back to the things that you love. I hear you, all of you. Parliamentarians hear it in their communities. We all hear it from friends and family. From people like Lori from here in Ontario who wrote to me to say she disagrees with the bad behavior of the blockaders, but she's also tired of the restrictions. Or Helen from Toronto who's worried about what the restrictions are doing to children's mental health. I understand. We don't want these measures to last longer than they should. And we never did. But the truth is, because of all of our efforts, we saved more lives in Canada than in many other countries. We helped people like Samuel from Courtney, BC, who also wrote to tell me that as a healthcare worker, our measures are keeping him safe. C'est parce qu'on a travaillé ensemble et qu'on s'est fait vacciner qu'on a récupéré plus d'un million d'emplois. On a demandé aux gens de se faire vacciner précisément parce qu'on veut éviter des confinements et des restrictions. Et c'est ce que les Canadiens ont fait. En regardant vers l'avant, on continue de travailler avec les responsables de la santé publique et de suivre les meilleurs conseils scientifiques pour garder les gens en sécurité et pour protéger les travailleurs de santé. Every day, we consider and reconsider what's possible and what's best to protect Canadians. I have multiple meetings every week to talk about what the next step are. And this morning, for example, I spoke with Dr. Tam and Minister Duclos, among others, about the plan to adjust travel measures under federal jurisdiction. As Canadians, it's important to continue being there for one another. We're fighting a virus. We're not fighting each other. People are making sacrifices and have been for the past two years. It's never the time to hurt our economy and fellow Canadians with illegal blockades, but especially not now. After all we've sacrificed together, after all we've done, to get back to the things we love and reopen our lives. Avant de terminer, je veux parler de la situation en Ukraine. On continue de travailler de façon très proche avec le président Biden et nos alliés. Ce matin, on a eu un sommet virtuel pour discuter de nos efforts diplomatiques, économiques et militaires. During the summit with President Biden and allies, we discussed the importance of finding a peaceful solution. That remains our focus. We're all concerned that Russia is continuing to build up its truth presence and looking actively for excuses to act. Instead, Russia must de-escalate. The West is standing firm together, coordinated, and ready to impose severe costs, including sanctions, if Russia invades Ukraine once again. We're also strengthening our support and presence through NATO, and we will continue <clears throat> to support Ukraine democracy, sovereignty and independence, and more than anything else, continue to support the people of Ukraine. This is an evolving situation, but the bottom line is this. We're not seeking confrontation with Russia, but we're resolved 
to stand firm with the Ukrainian people's right to determine their own future. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Prime Minister. Merci, Premier Ministre. We will now begin with 20 minutes of questions, starting with 10 minutes from the room, followed by 10 minutes by the phone. On va maintenant commencer avec 20 minutes de questions, commençant avec 10 minutes dans la salle, suivi par 10 minutes par la téléphone. Première question. Hello, Prime Minister. Mike Blanchfield, Canadian Press. It's been two weeks, and only now is the Ontario government taking concrete steps. Until now, your government has simply said you'll continue to provide resources, one asked. So why has it taken two weeks, 15 days, for any government anywhere to do something directly to address this crisis now? From the very beginning, we have been supporting uh, the Ottawa Police Force and the province of Ontario with any resources they need uh, to keep public order, to uh, ensure that they're able to move forward on uh, ending these blockades. I think citizens of Ottawa, indeed all Canadians, are impatient for they, them uh, to be done, uh, for people to go home. The message has been clear. People have been heard. Um, in this country, jurisdictions work together to ensure the right outcomes for citizens. And every step of the way, the federal government has been there with resources, with support, uh, with guidance uh, and uh, engagement uh, that is uh, getting us through this one step at a time. Bonjour, M. Trudeau, Laurence Martin, de Radio-Canada. Vous dites que toutes les options sont sur la table. Est-ce que ça veut dire, est-ce que ça inclut l'armée, ça aussi? Et pour vous, quel est le moment dans cette situation où ce serait nécessaire, par exemple, de l'envoyer? On sait que dans euh, des manifestations, des situations comme ça, c'est très important d'y aller de façon progressive. Euh, on sait que la meilleure solution pour ces euh, blocages illégaux, c'est que les gens décident que, effectivement, ils se sont fait entendre, ils ont pu exprimer leur frustration, leur désaccord, et que c'est maintenant le temps de rentrer chez eux. Euh, c'est le message qu'on passe depuis un bon bout de temps. Euh, maintenant, il commence à voir qui a, va avoir des réelles conséquences à leur euh, licence, à, à, leur, euh, à leur avenir, à leur emploi, s'ils se font arrêter dans des, des barricades illégaux. Et il y a des gens qui vont, euh, on l'espère, choisir de rentrer chez eux. Sinon, il y a une intervention policière qui va être de plus en plus robuste. Et euh, on va continuer de répondre de façon proportionnée. Mais euh, la police <coughs> doit utiliser les moyens euh, étape par étape pour en finir, mais on le dit très clairement, ce blocage de la ville d'Ottawa, ce blocage particulièrement de notre économie qui fait mal aux Canadiens à travers le pays qui euh, sont impactés par euh, ces barricades, euh, ça doit en finir, on doit en finir. Uh, Prime Minister, I, I know you don't like to talk about your father's legacy, but he faced some similar decisions in 1970 about the use of the Canadian forces in a, in a civilian law enforcement capacity. You said a moment ago, everything's on the table. Did, could you explain uh, to what extent military is being considered? And also, how much did your father's experience back then color your own reaction to this and the decision that you may still have to make? I think the, as I've said many times, my uh, values are deeply informed by the way I've brought, been brought up, not just by my father, but by my experiences as a Canadian. I think that's what every politician brings to bear, the core values that they stand for. Uh, but every situation is different. And what we're seeing right now is people who are um, frustrated deeply by this unprecedented global pandemic that has been hitting Canadians so hard over these past two years leaving people tired, frustrated, angry, wanting it to be done. Unfortunately, we know that this pandemic doesn't end because we cross our arms and decide that it's over. This pandemic will end by following science, by supporting each other, by being there for each other as Canadians have done throughout these past two years. As a government, we made a promise to have people's backs every step of the way. And that means doing the things that keep people safe and supported and get our economy to come roaring back 
as quickly as possible for everyone. And that's why these blockades that are not helping this pandemic end any sooner, that are hurting our supply chains, hurting families across the country, endangering our recovery both from the health crisis and from the economic crisis, are so wrong. And that's why we are going to continue to use the tools that we have as a society to ensure that these blockades end. And that starts with local police forces having the support of orders of government, of national police resources. That's how we are getting through this process. Bonjour, M. Trudeau, Olivier Perron, voici de TVA. Vous avez qualifié le plan de M. Ford de responsable et nécessaire. Ma question, c'est est-ce qu'il est suffisant? Si la réponse est non, est-ce que vous allez faire comme la gouverneure, notamment du Michigan, vous demande, et de déployer l'intervention du fédéral? Le fédéral est déjà déployé. Le fédéral est présent sur le terrain avec des membres de la GRC qui sont là pour appuyer la police locale, pour appuyer euh, la police provinciale. Nous sommes engagés directement, en tant que gouvernement fédéral, dans la résolution. Nous sommes en train de travailler à côté des partenaires qui ont la juridiction. Nous sommes là pour s'assurer que ça finisse rapidement et de la bonne façon, on l'espère paisiblement. Sir, you're talking today about support and resources. There's an outstanding request from the Ottawa Police for 1,800 officers that hasn't been filled. You're talking about talking with mayors and premiers. Is that supposed to provide comfort to businesses in Centertown that have been closed for a week, to auto workers who are being laid off because the Ambassador Bridge is closed? We have provided hundreds of police officers uh, to jurisdictions that needed them, including Ottawa. Uh, the request for 1,600 officers was carefully examined by both the OPP and experts uh, within the RCMP leadership to look at what exactly the plan is, what is exactly needed, and what is needed is being provided to be able to move through this in a peaceful, responsible way. But again, the best way to resolve this, the best way to stop hurting Canadian citizens hard-working Canadians across this country is for the people in these protests to understand that they have been heard, but it's time to go home. It's time to bring your kids home from this protest. It is now an illegal protest, and the consequences on them and on their families uh, will be significant if they choose to continue with this illegal activity. Bonjour, M. Trudeau. Je voudrais revenir sur la question de l'armée. Êtes-vous en mesure aujourd'hui d'écarter catégoriquement un déploiement éventuel de l'armée? C'est pas très clair. Comme j'ai toujours été extrêmement clair, on ne veut jamais déployer l'armée contre des civils canadiens, une population. C'est quelque chose à éviter à tout prix. C'est une solution de dernier, 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 dernier recours. Évidemment, dans une situation comme ça, on doit être prêt pour toute éventualité, mais euh, avant d'aller de, de, de l'avant de avec une proposition comme ça, d'appeler l'armée, il y a tellement d'autres étapes qu'on peut et qu'on est en train euh, d'utiliser euh, qu'on n'est pas rendu là encore, loin de là. Um, I've been very, very clear that using... Uh, military uh, forces against civilian populations in Canada or in any other democracy is something to avoid having to do at all costs. That's why uh, the solution right now is focused on police forces enforcing the laws that exist protecting public order in the way that they are trained to do, in a uh, predictable, uh, progressive approach that doesn't skip any steps, that works to conclude this situation peacefully. That's why right now it has become a lot more 
difficult and a lot more impactful and, quite frankly, expensive for people who are in those protests because they're tired of COVID to continue to be part of these illegal protests. The consequences on their lives for choosing to continue to endanger the lives and livelihoods of other Canadians, to continue to violate our laws, are going to be more and more extensive. And therefore, uh, we are very hopeful that people will choose to leave these protests peacefully now that they've been heard. Um, there are further steps for law enforcement to take as uh, that happens or not, but we are a long way from ever having to call in the military, although, of course, we have to be uh, ready for any eventuality, uh, but uh, it is not something we are seriously contemplating at this time. Uh, Prime Minister, I'm wondering if you have any regrets about the approach that you've taken to the protesters at any time, especially your comments when they first arrived. Do you think that actually helped, or do you think it sort of angered them and they felt misunderstood and caused the protesters to really dig in, so to speak? I think there was a lot of Canadians scratching their heads at the fact that um, protesters who purported to speak for truckers uh, actually didn't represent the 90% of truckers who are vaccinated. I think where uh, they certainly struck a chord with a lot of Canadians is that people are tired of COVID. And they're tired of the restrictions. But at the same time, as a government, we made a promise to Canadians to have their backs every step of the way for as long as it takes. And part of having people's backs is making sure that the public health measures that we bring in the supports for Canadians, the supports for provinces that bring in restrictions, these are the things that get us through this pandemic. These are the things that save lives. And we are going to continue to follow the science and do what is necessary to keep Canadians safe every step of the way. Because quite frankly, Canadians stepped up. 90% of Canadians got vaccinated. People have been there for each other. They're united in wanting to be there for each other. They're also united in being sick and tired of this pandemic. Those two things can be true and are true. And our responsibility as orders of government is to continue to be there for them every step of the way. Boris Proud du Devoir, qu'est-ce que ça vous fait, Monsieur le Premier ministre? Euh, comment vous vous sentez par rapport au fait que les yeux du, du monde entier sont sur vous par rapport à une situation qui n'a pas bougé depuis deux semaines et qui s'est empirée? J'en ai parlé justement avec le président Biden ce matin, euh, le fait que euh, ces manifestations ici au Canada euh, sont liées à une réalité à travers le monde, aux États-Unis, mais ailleurs dans le monde, où les gens sont frustrés, pas seulement de la pandémie, mais des restrictions et des gouvernements qui les ont protégés. Et malheureusement, on est en train de voir des liens pas seulement avec euh, les Américains ici au Canada, mais avec d'autres à travers le monde qui sont en train de chercher à miner la confiance que les gens ont dans leurs institutions, dans leur démocratie, dans leurs euh, leur concitoyens. Et nous nous devons de continuer de rester présents pour protéger les citoyens. Dès les débuts de cette pandémie, j'ai fait une promesse aux Canadiens qu'on allait être là pour eux avec tout ce qu'ils avaient besoin pour aussi longtemps qu'ils en avaient besoin. Et on va continuer d'être là. Thank you. We will now go to the operator for questions over the phone for 10 minutes. One question, one follow-up. Nous allons maintenant aller à la téléphone pour 10 minutes de questions. Une question et un suivi. Merci. Operator, over to you. Thank you, merci. For questions over the phone, please press star one on the device's keypad. For the questions téléphone, press étoile one on your device. The first question is from Olivia Stefanovic from CBC News. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Hi, Prime Minister Trudeau. Provinces are lifting vaccine passports, and your government, as we understand it, is moving to lift the PCR testing around travel. Are you concerned that the protesters will claim victory for these changes 
and this will embolden them further? I think different provinces are uh, taking decisions that they feel are appropriate to them on vaccine mandates and restrictions they have in their jurisdictions. As you know, the federal government has uh, responsibility over the borders, uh, over uh, international travel, and, and over uh, the federal public service. Um, as I said, we had uh, extensive meetings today on the next steps uh, that we look forward to taking, and we'll be making announcements regarding uh, our border posture uh, next week. Are you concerned, though, that any announcements you do make could could reach these protesters claiming victory and emboldening them further? Um, I think it's extremely important to emphasize that all the decisions we take will be based in science, and indeed, um, will be focused on Canadians getting uh, their lives back to normal. Uh, I can emphasize that uh, many of the measures that we've been talking about for a long time, for example, the measures that Canadian, uh, the Canadian government brought in on uh, needing to be vaccinated to get on a plane or a train, uh, or needing to be vaccinated to work in the federal public service, are not among the things that we are considering uh, changing. Uh, we're continuing to look at the posture to ensure uh, that uh, people are able uh, to get back to the things they love as this Omicron wave uh, begins to recede. Thank you. Merci. The next question is from Marika Walsh from the Globe and Mail. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Good afternoon. Thanks for taking our questions. You spoke briefly at the beginning about foreign funding. Next question and come back to Marika. Thank you, Mayor. So the next question will be from Tanda McCharles from the Toronto Star. Please go ahead. The line is open. Hi, um, not there. Hi, um, Prime Minister. Uh, I wanted to first point to Marika's strategy. So a couple of points. You said uh, that steps the province is taking now finally are reasonable and necessary. But I want to go back to the question of why it's taken so long at big 15 days. What is the border blockage? In other words, since the protesters have to work. Uh, sorry, you were cutting in and out a little bit, uh, uh, Tonda. Can you repeat the end of your question? Did it take so long? Uh, was this thing only coordinated in all of your responses because of the border blockages? Did that tactic work? Uh, obviously, uh, the uh, concern that we're facing on the borders is uh, significant. Uh, we're seeing uh, six different auto plants have to shut down over the past days because of uh, lack of parts flowing across the Ambassador Bridge in Windsor. Uh, we're seeing uh, supply chains disrupted uh, out west because of the Coots border, chain, uh, border crossing uh, and uh, in Ontario because of uh, the, uh, the Windsor crossing. Uh, these are things that we are absolutely taking extremely seriously, but we have been taking the situation seriously from, uh, from the very beginning and working with uh, partners, municipal and federal, uh, to put an end to these uh, peacefully and responsibly. That is the job of of, uh, police, uh, police officers and police forces. The responsibility of politicians is to ensure uh, that the police forces have the tools and the resources they need, and that's what we've been doing. But we do not direct the local police of jurisdiction, uh, even uh, when they're in proximity to uh, an international border crossing. We all work together, and quite frankly, regardless of the uh, the, the, the conversations being going on between jurisdictions, I can assure you that on the ground, uh, the actual uh, cohesion and alignment with uh, all different uh, police forces, federal, provincial, and municipal, uh, has been exemplary. Follow up. What did President Biden tell you about the U.S. influence 
for participation in the Canadian protest? And how was it cut off any foreign funding? Obviously, uh, President Biden expressed his uh, concern for the well-being of Canadians and indeed uh, for the jobs uh, and economic ties that uh, flow back and forth across our border every single day. Um, he expressed uh, concern not just uh, for the impacts right now, but uh, the indication that there is international support uh, from the United States and from elsewhere around the world for these protests. Uh, we've seen uh, that the uh, attack, for example, on the Ottawa 911 system uh, came from the United States. We see that uh, almost half of the funding uh, through certain portals that is flowing to uh, the uh, barricaders here in Canada uh, is coming from the United States. Uh, we see a mobilization of uh, some of the more um, challenging political elements uh, in Canada and in the United States around support uh, for these blockades that are hurting citizens. Um, we are going to continue to work together as we have been uh, on resolving this situation, but also on uh, strengthening our, our institutions and our democratic principles. Operator, can we go back to Marika for a question? Yes, thank you. Ms. Walsh, if you could press star one, please, on the device's keypad. Next question, Marika Walsh, the Globe and Mail. Please go ahead. Good afternoon. Prime Minister, can you please provide us with some more details about the percentage of the funds that the federal government believes is coming from the U.S.? And what percentage of the people in the crowd are actually American? Uh, those aren't uh, details that I have right in front of me. I've heard that on certain platforms the number of uh, U.S. donations are approaching 50 percent, but uh, we can make sure that we, uh, uh, we ensure that, uh, that the, that information is shared uh, with you on that. Uh, in terms of the presence of Americans uh, in our protests, uh, I can assure you that our police uh, services are monitoring carefully and uh, watching and coordinating with uh, partner agencies around the world. Follow-up? Thank you. And the U.S. has said that it's offered support to the federal government. Has the federal government accepted that support, and what specifically is it? Um, I don't want to get into operational details, but I can assure you that the conversations directly uh, between uh, Governor Whitmer of, of, uh, of uh, Michigan and our officials, and indeed with the White House, have ensured us of uh, resources and support if necessary, and uh, the folks on the ground are working out what is necessary and uh, what could be used as we move forward. Next question. Thank you, merci. Next question is from Justin Lee, freelance. Please go ahead, the line is open. Good afternoon, Prime Minister. Uh, you made it clear that a military option is the last, last, last resort. Um, you're still pleading with them to go home. These protesters have made it clear they're not leaving, they're not listening to you. Um, they don't really have much interest in what you have to say. So what comes next? What is the next part of the federal uh, solution here, given how overwhelmed the city of Ottawa is? First of all, Justin, I, I, I don't accept uh, the contention that the uh, City of Ottawa has uh, exhausted its uh, tools and its resources. The Ottawa Police Force uh, has been uh, given resources from both the OPP uh, and the, and, uh, the RCMP. Uh, there is uh, concerted efforts around uh, planning and approaches that will uh, move forward in a proportional way, uh, but I think it is very clear that uh, the time for these protests to end uh, has come. Uh, people who are there because they're tired uh, of COVID restrictions, we understand that. Everyone is tired of COVID restrictions. Um, but uh, we need to make sure that uh, our laws are followed in this country and our laws will be enforced. That's the role of the Ottawa Police Force. That's the role of police of jurisdictions across this country. Uh, and they will, as uh, the Premier indicated today, uh, be enforcing uh, stronger and stronger measures uh, that will make it uh, more and more difficult uh, for the protesters to, in good conscience, choose to stay part of illegal protests. Follow up, and this will be the last question. 
Prime Minister, at the top, you said that a more aggressive enforcement action is right now off the table because of the risk of violence. People hear that and they get really worried. Uh, there's concerns that uh, weapons may be present in an occupied area. Uh, there's concern about what those protesters will do if police try and make arrests. Do you have any visibility on that? Do you have uh, any indication of exactly uh, what elements are in that crowd and what potential for violence there, there actually is? I can assure you that I have been uh, briefed regularly by both our intelligence agencies and uh, police agencies on the risk levels to uh, civilians, including uh, protesters and vulnerable people within the protest. There are people who are there uh, with their kids uh, in these protests. Um, and their well-being is, of course, top of mind uh, for the police services, as it is the well-being of uh, citizens in and around the protests as well, who just are trying to go through their, their daily lives. Uh, there is always a concern around escalation, but the police have a uh, robust framework within which they go step by step on making it more and more uh, difficult for the protests to continue, more and more expensive for people to choose to stay uh, in the protest, both in ways financial, but also on impact of their lives and livelihood. Um, it is time for these protesters to go home. It is time to recognize that this protest, this blockade, is illegal, uh, and uh, those consequences on people choosing to remain uh, will be uh, increasingly challenging. And the police have the tools to move forward in a step-by-step -step approach that will uh, bring back order to the city of Ottawa and indeed to our border crossings. Merci, ceci m'est fait à la conférence de presse. Thank you, that concludes today's press conference. Merci beaucoup tout le monde.